this is a uh, collage of photos that actually uh, were from the Historical Society collection of various things that happened during the, the time that Harvey Milk was alive. Wow. So if you get really close to it, you can see all these people and uh, locations and things around San Francisco. Yeah. And it's been put together in this amazing collage. Places section, and it goes through some of the things like Mona's 440 Club, which um, was a gay nightclub back in the 40s. Uh, we have Finocchio's, which is a, which actually was world famous in its day as being a, uh, a drag queen club, uh, but it was very high end. It was down in North Beach. It was in the area where all the main entertainment, all the strip clubs and things were. But Pinocchio's was uh, attended by politicians and uh, celebrities. It was just it was the place to be seen uh, back during its day. It closed, I'm not sure, not that long ago, because I was actually at a show with Pinocchio's, so probably in the 90s, the eight, late 80s or the 90s is when that closed. Uh, the, in the Mission District, there is a women's building and this is an example, of, or this is a artist rendering of a mural that is painted on the side of that building. Um, the women have always been a uh, force to be reckoned with in, in San Francisco. Uh, it's not just a place for gay men, it's a place for gay women and they have been, uh, as many people know, they've been uh, our allies during the AIDS crisis um, and uh, they are also uh, firmly entrenched here at the Historical Society. One of my favorite little gems in the collection that we have displayed here is this shoe. Uh, in 1991, Governor George Duke Majin of California um, vetoed the first domestic partner legislation. And the police, anticipating trouble in the Castro, decided to be preemptive and they were, they'd already masked Frank Jordan, whose shoe this is, um, was police chief at the time. And although I was living in San Francisco at the time, I may not have this story 100% right, but this is pretty close. The police were coming down Castro Street, and the guys in what used to be called the Elephant Walk, kitty corner from, from where we're standing now, um, got the word that they were coming down the street, and they came pouring out of the Elephant Walk, they called out to everybody else who was in the bars, and they chased the police up the street and chased them out of the Castro. And in the process, Frank Jordan lost his shoe. Somebody had the sense to pick it up and give it to the historical society. So this is the kind of grandmother's attic stuff that we've got um, at the historical society. That's awesome. <laughs> this mural on the back wall um, is called the Parade of Tyrants. We actually have oh, wow. this in a postcard. But this was the uh, one of the gay parades. Um, and we have Idi Amin, oh, uh, the KKK, um, the infamous Anita Bryant, uh, we got Hitler and Mussolini all on wow. his uh, placards. <laughs> right that there with Anita. Awesome. Hmm. This, uh, well, let's, let's go over here first. One of the things that very few people know is that the first person that we know of to be openly gay to actually run for elected office uh, in the United States was Jose Saria, who huh. later became one of the emperors in the imperial courts of San Francisco. But he ran for office in 1961. He didn't get elected, but he got a significant amount of votes. Mm -hmm. um, so he was paving the way for you know later people like Harvey Milk. Um, and speaking of Harvey, this is this is the suit that I referred to earlier. Um, so this was the actual suit that Harvey was wearing the day he died. Um, you may also recall in the movie that 
uh, Scott Smith, his partner, uh, was not his partner of the moment when he died. However, Scott did inherit um, everything that was in the apartment. Uh, it took a bunch of, it took an odyssey uh, when Scott left San Francisco, the uh, items were shipped to his parents' house and they stayed in his garage, their garage. I don't remember where that was, but it was like Idaho or Montana or something like that. And then when Scott died um, of AIDS, the, the uh, collection needed to go someplace and someone thought about the historical society. So we actually wound up with an amazing amount of Harvey's stuff. We had everything that was packed up in his apartment after he died. All of his records and papers and books and everything that was there is at the Historical Society. The only thing that is not is um, many of his papers is, that applied to uh, his time in politics are at the uh, public library in the Hormel collection there. But all of his stuff that wasn't actually papers is, is with us. Um, Another thing I'd like to point out, uh, something that's become more, uh, uh, has been understood a little bit more during the past couple of years is the fact that the Stonewall Rebellion in 1968 was not the first time that an organized group of gay people stood up and said, we've had enough and we're not taking this police harassment anymore. It actually started out in 1966 in a place called Compton's Cafeteria. Um, the former um, executive director of our uh, historical society has actually cre pre uh, created a documentary which has been picked up by public television and is often um, broadcast during Gay Pride uh, Month in June around the country. And the actual documentary is called <coughs> excuse me, The Riots at Compton's Cafeteria.